game. But well, let's start with the match at our hands. It's going to be between AOL and, of course, last minute arrivals. So, so in the lineups for the first game, that is the home map of AOL, is going to be Dark Risen for AOL as Odin. Then with him, we are, we'll be having Aigo Heimdall as Oranos. And oh no, sorry, Aigo Heimdall is actually for the other team. Just those uh, clan techs actually confusing me a bit here, as I'm still used to RTS Lee streaming. So no, Recon is the second for AOL as Ra, and the third one, Iron Maiden, is playing Loki. It's going to be the third for Albis Onis Lobias, which is the name of the clan in whole. As for the other team, last minute arrivals, we are seeing that it's going to be Buhani as Oranos, then Mateus as Poseidon, and last, Aigo Heimdall right now. That's going to be correct as Oranos. So, interesting civilizations, and of course, since we are on Tundra, we should be yet again expecting a bit aggressive gameplay, so it's kind of interesting to see what's going to happen with the Ra. Starting off right about now, looking at Buhani as the first player in here. <laughs> yeah, a few seconds actually, unfortunately for him being basically stolen by this unfortunate sending of the goat right on, on the build. Build basis here for the economic guild, definitely not something that you want to do, as it's stealing very precious seconds in the early game. And well, looking at the hunt on the left side, seems pretty easy for him to get it from, especially combined with the hunt at the top. So this definitely looks like a pretty good spawn for Buhani. Already going for a bit of scouting into the opponent's side, at least on the left, with the one, whereas the other two are going for a bit of scouting at the back, discovering gold together with the Aurochs. And well, we also see that Heimdall is basically doing something similar, sending one of those oracles to the back. One is going to the forefront, already discovering very nice hunt in the front. Even though it's quite far away, this is definitely going to be something that he will want to get it from a lot sooner. But this one is not really all that far away, especially considering that it's not really far away from Buhani either. So that could potentially be something that they might be interested in gathering from. They are having the Oranosis and whatnot. Strawberries, of course, as we are also looking at the other oracle being at the back. Right thanks to the TC, pretty decent hunt with berries. Very good defensive position for them overall. And we are also seeing the third player, Atreus, as Poseidon. Casting, of course, the lure. And, oh, I definitely hope the Caribou actually went from somewhere, or rather has gone from somewhere like here. Because if he didn't and went just from this position, well, that would be pretty bad. But I really think that he actually has gone from the top. And yeah, it shouldn't be really all that much of a problem for him with the lure in there. Hmm. Otherwise, behind the base, a lot of gold for them. Like, really, a lot of gold all, all around. So, pretty nice map spawn for them. And right next to the front, you see of oh, the green player, Materials. We are seeing a relic for Pegasus Scout. Not really bad. And it could be useful for them overall. And next to the front, you see of Heimdall. We also see a pretty decent hunt, not really far away. And quite a decent amount of potentially gold mines. But yeah, those are kind of risky. So, I don't really think they're going to be used all that easily. Especially if their opponents are gonna go for something a bit more aggressive or maybe even standard aggression in the, the classical age. Switching to other team then, so far don't see anything that would be out of the ordinary. Cheaper siege weapons, that's nice, uh, especially considering that they're actually having the Ra in the pocket, which I think it's quite lucky for them. Very good spawn, definitely going to help having the aggressive gods on the sides in here. And you can also see that the yellow player, as we are in his home base, right about now, with pretty nice hunt overall, he's also having very nice gold in here, he's already scouting quite close to the opponent, basically trying to see what's going to happen in there, and well, that might definitely be something that he will need to know as a Loki, because of course he will want to raid his opponents as fast as possible. So far, uh, really quite nice placement of hunt, and overall not really any kind of lack of it, and of the gold mines either. Front you see for him... Well, not really bad, yet again, covering at least a bit of hunt in here, but otherwise, nothing all that great. Uh, I think this TC is a bit more important for Buhani, because it's closer to his team base than, rather home base than this. Not much, but slightly. And much more importantly, it's a bit more into the middle of the map, even though those three lines are Karasaki, limiting the strategic importance. But still, once you have a TC that is all that much to the side, it's not really all that useful in the game. And it's not going to allow you to basically uh, advance it through opponents step by step. 
Though we have seen interesting stuff happening as Darkison is already in the middle. Right now building temple and Hersey is in there. And is he actually gonna go for a bit of defense or is it something else? Because right now he's scouted nicely by Heimdall. But he is, of course, oh, that's Ptah at 415. That's pretty decent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and everything is moving into one spot. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a shift in sense shenanigans. With not just him, but he's, of course, going to take right. Rather, Blue is going to take right with him. We are going to be expecting uh, the INAR also for Darkness, and of course. Mm -hmm. So I'm gone. That definitely makes sense. And here we go on the opponents. And oh my. <laughs> Here we go, 95%. So unfortunately for them, they are a bit too late. Vision through the spy in here on the villager at the top. But it probably won't matter all that much, because even though Recon is right now casting the rain, which is definitely meant to basically protect against potential ceasefire uh, from the Poseidon player, we are of course seeing a very interesting strategy. Exactly, Matrius would be right now seizing. Saving the town center, that's not going to happen. Even though there are a few losses, basically just one <laughs> so yeah that's basically just one loss it seems one or two pretty good job by them not really many losses at all and they are definitely aiming to basically put burani sun out of the game altogether right to the stars still in the tc of course which definitely happens quite often and well getting rid of the towers basically cleaning him cleaning him up altogether so that he doesn't have anything left in here and Unfortunately, this will just idle in here, but probably won't matter all that much. But this is nicely played, nice strategy. And we are also seeing that Red is at least, or rather, at least has been able to retreat with a few villages. Actually, quite a lot of them. I don't think he lost any. But with the spy in here, yeah, the opponent will still see exactly what's going to happen with them. And yeah, that's not ideal at all. In the meantime, Recon is, of course, at 2 TC, so he's basically going for a bit different to TC faster heroic, <laughs> potentially. Wouldn't be surprised at all. And we are seeing that the yellow player is going to be joining in through fun as well, and is right now pursuing Matreus' heroes together with Centaur, as they are joining into the battle together with Heimdall, who is right about now having at least a pretty decent army also through the Valor. Unfortunately, this troll is gonna get dead. Just now, and how is it going to continue about now? You can see that Buhani san is right now going for a first DC yet again, because he does have enough resources. Because he was left with enough villages, you can see that he is actually still having a pretty decent economy overall. And since he has been able to advance into the next age, it might not be all that impossible for him to come back into the game. Even though the opponents are right about now quite interested in basically occupying his base for the rest of the game. But the army that right now from Hamidal and Matreus is arriving into the base, well, that could be a bit of a problem. But this is definitely going to be quite important for the next gameplay of AOL. Yeah. We're afraid, of course, to try and kill Buhani San as, pos as much as possible. Fortunately, one village is dead, and is he gonna lose a few extra? Heimdall, of course, going to be hidden inside. But actually, if Iron Maiden can keep the red player out of basically gathering anything, he would still be effectively keeping him out of the game, so that would be quite worthwhile for him. As I'm thinking that uh, Rincon together with Dark Vision should be basically up to par to deal with potentially defending against this, but only if they get rid of the towers, because the towers could still be a pretty big problem for EOL, because of course they are possibly going to be dishing quite a lot of damage into literally anything in there, but stealing of the gold of course, quite valuable, and also Basically making sure that in case a last minute arrivals actually manage to retake the base right now the towers are in. Exactly, it's going to be a pretty big problem right now for Recon. They are going to be at least left with no gold inside his base. That's also part of the strategy in here. Yeah, those towers definitely underestimated by AOL. And even though they executed nicely the early attack right about now, they are they are going to be forced into pretty heavy defensive because the army in classical fighting from Dra is not going to be up to par with Heimdall and not even Matreus. At the same time, Matreus seems to be quite engaged. He's already having medium epicons. Nice upgrades. Giving something extra like spirited charge and such. Why not? So it's looking like that Iron Maiden might be able to actually bind him just by himself. And he, if he can even keep Wuhanison at bay, 
that, that will basically leave uh, Hugo Heimdall just alone against Zikon and Dark Reason, and that should be favoring them quite nicely. So it's going to be, I think, at this point, all up to Iron Maiden if he can apply enough, enough pressure on their opponents, and that might really help him and his teammates overall. Second TC for Matreus, for Matreus as he's trying to basically keep up with the economy. Nice counting at the back, basically being left for not sure what. Because Poseidon, of course, doesn't have Underworld Passage. But it's not something that you will be useful at. The path potentially could show where is the trade route and such, because you can already see that Matreus is going for a bit of Radiant himself, having a pretty decent amount of video Hippigons in here, and he has already a bit earlier forced Dark Reason to retreat at least for a moment. At the same time, Yellow continue with Radiant. Right now, checking up on Heimdall. If he plays it correctly, he can actually prevent them from coming into a house. And he seems he's doing it correctly right about now. Very well. Very well indeed. And, and, oh. One. No! Why? <laughs> Why? He could have actually killed him. He definitely could have. That's 12 damage. He has 8 8 2 hits. There definitely were at least 2 heresies around him. He definitely could have killed it, but. Overall, it's probably not going to matter all that much in the long run because I'm fully expecting that he's gonna basically just return there and they're going to be all that much more vulnerable. But still, he could have killed at least that one and all the nice work that he did with the micro in there against rather preventing them from coming in through Mother, through Manor. was kind of wasted in the end. Definitely a shame. But in the meantime, we see economy growing for Recon. With a bit of protection by Dark Reason, but Dark, Dark Reason is already going for a bit of raiding himself. Still the spy, unfortunately. But he really doesn't have enough units for anything like this. Well, Heimdall is playing quite nicely and having enough army for basically dealing with any kind of nonsense that the blue player is right now sending into his base. Valkyrie just dead. Joining her comrades in Valhalla. And well, the Iron Maiden is right now forced into a bit of a retreat, but he still does have at least a second flank at the top. Killing Kataskopos potentially a few extra units and trying to get rid of Buhani Son, who is up with a bit of army. Well, well, well. As he's already having counter barracks, military barracks, and of course some manors so that he has in a population limit. In the meantime, Iron Maiden is also having a third flank that is at the bottom. Right now, basically trying to kill the citizens in here. So he needs to get rid of the manors so that they actually do not have a kind of safe spot in here for gathering food and such. But the villages are already somewhere else, I think, and yeah, definitely are. And we are going to be looking into the Teal's base, former Red's base, that is right about now being besieged by Heimdall. Not really easy game for Ikon, even though he's still at 2TC, so he should be getting pretty good economy overall. You also see on the minimap that Iron Maiden is taken second DC, but he's gonna be raided by Green, at the same time as he is raiding Green. <laughs> But, of course, those epicons are going to be slightly better. And there is a way for those guys to actually retreat in here. But the nice positioning of the army from Matreus is gonna kill a whole lot of them. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is pretty terrible raiding. Well, that was nicely played. All the way from the positioning of the of the epicons and even finding this. This is really nicely played and definitely how you should go with raiding. We are so far seeing armory up. But not really any kind of upgrade yet. Oh, those guys could be next in line. Especially if they are going to be discovered by this oracle. So far they don't seem to be, even though somebody is going in there exactly. And I curiously saw. <laughs> but he had a pretty good guess that there could be something in there. So yep, that's that. And we are going to be moving back into Teal's base. Where Teal is getting... His has basically handed to him because he needs all the help that he can get from Dark Reason. But in the cooperation, they of course should be winning, and they are because they are two, and the Heimdall just one. Yell right now retreating back because he needs a bit of help inside his own base, of course, as those Epicons are damn strong, especially from Poseidon, even though he still doesn't have anything extra on them. So they are just right now cheaper. They could be using some extra upgrades from both Hermes. And overall the god, and we are seeing a relic in here, what is it? Super Secrets of the Titans, okay. I'm um, not exactly sure if it's going to be coming into play in here. 
uh, at the top, but Metreus is having enough if he comes right inside his base. And we are also seeing a bit of relic in here, which is for the Pegasus that we have seen at the very start of the game. Otherwise, something interesting. Oh, <laughs> yes, most definitely. But with the TC already finished, this it is basically not going to be all that effective. But of course, a lady on the gold is always important. One unfortunate villager caught in the crossfire, and he can come in into the next age, and that could definitely help him, especially preventing this TC, as he could be quite easily killing the citizen and basically allowing his army together uh, with Darkism to somehow get rid of the army of their opponent. But at the same time, you can see that Buhani's son is basically back into the game with the one TC having pretty decent economy and amount of villages and such, as he's also defending at the top against the Raiden. Even though he probably doesn't have enough army for this in the combination with the TC. But yep, definitely a nice place to go and for an armory as it will help with basically limiting the maneuverability of the opponent's army. This TC though seems to be coming up for Heimdall, so he's possibly going to be at 2, even though Recon is already at 3 in Heroic Age. Dark isn't right now a second in Heroic Age. So nobody else seems to be continuing into the next ages yet. And I'm just right now waiting if Recon is gonna build some Migdol in here. So far not really interested, so basically classic fighting in the Heroic. And that seems like a bit of a problem, because together with Buhani's son, Heimdall is having enough army in here, and we are seeing <laughs> a combo of god powers in here. Not only the trees, but also the locusts, but I don't really see that they've actually killed anything. Oh Buhani, come on. Send a villager right into the locusts. Well, you were warned. But otherwise, I don't really see any dead donkeys and I haven't really heard them. So, unfortunately, I'm thinking that those locusts didn't catch anything all that important. As his fire is right now involved, if necessary, quite a lot. And I think it's not really a bad choice. Because they really need to defend this position as fast as possible. They need some reinforcements to come back because, of, obviously, Wuhan Sun didn't have enough army for this, but yep, this is gonna backfire. The amount of harassers in here is definitely going to be enough to bring it up in half a minute. So that's a nicely re nice reaction by Iron Maiden, and this is gonna get stolen, and that's something that they didn't want last minute arrivals, because of course this will mean a very, very nice defensible position right next to them, especially with the threat of flaming weapons right now getting up. Well, TC in the front for Heimdall though, in the meantime. As market is being prepared for Dark Risen. So he's potentially thinking about next age, even though he's still at just one TC. So he's going to be just hurrying up as an Odin, of course. So he's gonna go up in Ragnarok, quite probably, I would be thinking. And here we see that this could, this could actually be quite quite bad army for last minute rivals because with the flaming weapons. And ceasefire just now used up. He's gonna be wrecking absolutely everything in here. Even through the double army. If he is right now joined at the correct time with some army from the blue player and maybe even from Teal, this could definitely be something worthwhile for him for flame weapons. And it's almost looking like that he is gonna attempt to do so. But you can see that this would be a pretty bad choice. Because not only is he against all three opponents at once, this is very nicely played by last minute I was to actually isolate him from all the teammates. He really cannot do anything against all those Kerobali stay from both Buhani and Heimdall, so that would be a pretty terrible idea in fact now to go for the same weapons. And of course, is joining through fun. As there is a bit of raiding on the villages of Heimdall, who is unfortunate right about now, I think, uh, keeping an eye at the top more than anything else. Atreus right now into Heroic Age from Dionysus. And well, then the number of Kerobali stay just coming up. And that's of course going to be a pretty bad moment for any kind of guy who is having infantry, like Loki, for example. Guys coming from all over the base. Some idols, probably not noticed yet by the Iron Maiden. Definitely a bit of a shame. <laughs> and then the villages in here, of course, at all the corners of the map. Of course, was the TC, which wasn't really any kind of doubt about that, and we are going to be waiting for Matreus to actually go for heavy apicons. Uh huh, they are already being researched, and they are going to be pretty deadly for any kind of army of their opponents, especially combined with the absolutely brutal numbers right now of Kato Ballista, which will definitely kill anything like spearmen or Ustarks or literally anything else. 
So blue attempting to arrive at the gold. Oh, I'm gold. Yeah, that's not gonna end well. Because yet again, all three last minute arrivals are arriving at the battlefield at the correct moment, not really. <laughs> too late in here and to get a bit of bronze that lasts one minute and a half. Oh well, this is going to be a pretty tough battle for them, even though Recon is switching to elephants already having heavies. And baseline of upgrades going to actually be a bit of a problem because they will be pretty strong overall. Copper weapons for the Hippicons. Attack from the back, but unfortunately, <laughs> a bit the wrong type of unit. And we are basically waiting for the yellow player to join into the battle yet again, but he seems to be taking things slowly and much more interested in basically capturing the map a bit more and making sure that he can supply units a bit faster into the opponent's base. And that's definitely something that he needs to do because we have seen that to be a bit of a problem, as even though he had a very nice army at the back in here, once he was met with a bit more from his opponent, he was just losing too much and wasn't able to replenish at all. Which forced him off that position and of course to lose the as well. So, some extra military upgrades, nothing for blue. Not even mediums, kind of interesting. Whereas for purple, we are seeing just medium infantry, also not really many upgrades all that much. This mummy is right now coming into forward, and well, she's probably not gonna have anything extra to kill. Especially if Polita is going to be concentrating on her. And well, with the back pack of actually Hippolyta not being able right now to be turned into minion from the mummy, should be able to get rid of her. Huh? Exactly. Mummy is dead, but it still doesn't mean that the attack could be over, especially switching into the catapults right now for Econ. And catapults are going to be a pretty big problem because only counterplay to that will most probably be the Hippicons from the green player. Yeah, somebody hasn't built a mighty camp in here. I'm fairly certain he actually is actually going to be having auto queue and waypoint to gold. Not anymore, but right now he's finishing. With Earthquake, and that is coming into Blue's base as he's getting rid of his main TC and, well, has he actually advanced? No, he hasn't. So he might have just as well actually killed his advance through next age. Let's switch into a Dark Risen. Probably not, because he doesn't have the resources for it. He would have basically gotten back thousands of resources, so he was not advancing to the next age yet. We haven't missed anything in there, but this attack is pretty strong right about now from Recon. As, and as he was important in the early game, he's right now going to be important in the late game, basically closing it up as Dark, or rather Iron Maiden, right now coming through the left side. And attempting to steal the TC from the opponents, but of course not going to be easy, especially because of this birdie and military building supply and something extra for him to kill. A sneaky gathering of gold at the back. Whereas, of course, Teal is advancing for a forward and has not boomed basically Egyptian with four TCs and already getting pretty nice upgrades champions, bronze, bronze, and copper. Apparently, not bad at all. And have elephants in here. <laughs> Having a fine day. <laughs> Kind of funny, those fine elephants. Well, he's probably gonna take him down. Gonna be taking down this TC, and well, that will mean that defensive position is basically gonna be breached, and that should that should result in a pretty tough situation for his opponents to deal with. Because even though the green player is right now doing all he can to basically kill Darkism, as he has reduced him to zero TCs and is basically killing all his economy, the second TC at the back is gonna be captured quite soon, and it seems like that he still does have enough economy to continue living and be an important part of the game. In the middle, Iron Maiden is also fighting a bit of green with purple. Still attempting to finish the TT as much as he can. And well, combined with the attack in here and the TT coming down, we are looking at a pretty convincing push at this, start, at this stage of the game. And it's really looking like that AOL well are going to be finishing with this. So we are seeing a switch into Heavy Prodromos to counter those elephants. But that's not often such a great idea, because Prodromos, even though they are great against Cavalry, they are absolutely terrible against everything else. And that's usually why you don't see them made all that much. And you often use, for example, Hoplites, because they are overall much more sturdier, and you can basically find anything, including the elephants. Tokuhani-san, the first to be reduced to zero TCs, is resigning the first. 
Heimdall with Matreus are following close behind. Well, I'm thinking that AOL actually thought this game is going to be a whole lot easier. They probably didn't expect 22 minutes of fighting, and heavy fighting it has to be said. Especially I liked how Heimdall played. It was really, really nicely done. He was able to hold both of the opponents at the bottom, basically at bay, allowing Vanisan to get back, get back and allowing Matreus to go for a bit of raiding and help him in the end. But of course, the early advantage was just too strong, and since Recon didn't really suffer any kind of damage to his economy through the shifting sands because he was able to build the second TC and continue building Echo, it meant that slowly but surely it amounted to the complete victory. Let's check the post game. Recon. Yeah. I would definitely give it to Heimdall. He was playing really well for his team. And he was one of the main reasons why the game wasn't as fast as Aeolus definitely thought it could be. Source distributed, of course, that's going to be from Recon. To, I'm not exactly sure into whom. Could have been helping Dark Risen to help him in the defense in the early game. I'll be thinking that might be it. Yeah, Dark is not really enough upgrades in here, but Puhan is son, of course, not much better to grab with Matrius, so it's not like not like it mattered all that much. Well, GG.